person on your left and the right is in the battle with you. Amen. Thank God for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I think that's it. God bless each and every one you pray for you. Happy Valentine's Day. Amen. Aren't you glad that you saved? Did you know every day Jesus loves you? Amen. 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 Nobody brought you a rose or a gift, anything else. You got the best gift of all. God sent the sun. Yeah. Yeah. And the sun has given us life. I love the sun because he showed his love. And he shows his love for his people each and every day. Amen. So, so let's cling to the love of God. Thank you for that song. My children grew up on that song. My grandchildren knew that song. We couldn't go to bed unless we sang at least two verses of Jesus loves me this I know. Yes, he loves me. Amen and amen. I wanted them to be assured in this life that there's somebody that loves them. Too many people are wandering around looking for love in all the wrong places. But all you've got to do is look up and live. Come on, let's bless the Lord for his love. And thank God for those that are dressing out, amen, in celebration of Black History Month. There's a new tribe in town, and amen, we thank God for them. They're, they're here to represent, and that's Brother Le Leggett and Roslyn, amen. Yeah. Dressed out along with RJ. Yeah. So amen, amen. Their tribe is represented on today. Yeah. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good seeing you again. Our Lisa, we love you. And we're going to miss you. We're going to be praying for you. Those that want to give her a card, say thank you or whatever. Um, where she at? Carrie Snow, Brother Boney, will be holding a basket if you have a card or something you want to give her. If not today, we will secure an address when she has one in Hawaii. And we will be in contact with her. We love you. And we thank God for all the service you've given to Shallow Baptist Church. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Yeah. And we know that the same God that she serves, he is waiting for her in Hawaii. Yeah. Amen. He has a plan. And yeah. he has a plan. Amen. So continue to pray for one another. It's good, amen, to see our sister Corner Gay in church with us all this morning. Yeah. It's good because I know she's been going through a difficult season and we're lifting up your sister in prayer. God's got her. Yeah. God's God. Amen and amen. Let us move on in the service of the Lord. Thank God for the male Christ. Thank God for Stephon. Stephon just took a leap. Amen. Stepping out by faith, doing his own thing. Amen. And you all encourage him to stay with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And everything on will be all right. If I've forgotten anything, charge it to my head and not my heart. Because I truly love you. Truly praying for you all the time. Amen. Thank you, Ma, for that powerful prayer. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad she decided the prayers of the righteous. I talked to Diane, we have said we gotta stop saying we make this expression all the time. Nothing I can do, I'm just gonna pray. Yeah. Isn't that sort of downplaying prayer? Yeah. The best you can do yeah. is to pray. Yeah. Because the prayers of the yeah. availer yeah. makes available dunamis power yeah. that can change a situation. So as my mama would say, child, dry your eyes, yeah. get up out of that bed, because at this point that ain't nothing but wasted water. <laughs> she give you a day or two. She, she, she was nicer than Nicole would give you 15 minutes. You know, but I'd give you three days, one for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. By that time, it's time for you to mount up. It's time to get up. And act like you know that you know. Yeah. Somebody's watching you. Yeah. You gonna roll over and play there? No. I said play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the service of the Lord. Thank God for the male chorus on this morning. Uh, the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verse, which I will read into your hearing after the selection and go right into the word, um, Matthew. It's in the King James Version this morning, 11th chapter, 
the 28th and the, to the 30th verse, just three verses. Amen. amen. And amen. Thank God for his presence. Thank God for his word. Yes. His word always anchors me and brings me back to my center, yes. which is Christ. Sometimes we get a little shaky, yes. but the word of God will bring you back yes. to your center. Amen. Yes. And amen. So make ready Matthew 11. I'm sorry. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. After the Sea of Smiling Selection, I'll be back before you with the preach word of God. Is that all right? Is that all right? Have you come for a word? Are you looking for a word? Following him at this particular time. 
Jesus says these words to his disciples, recognizing their state, knowing their condition. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Yeah. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God's word is coming to us from this morning from that 28th verse. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, I will, I will, give you rest. Yeah. Gracious Father, Heavenly God, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity to stand and declare another word for thee. We thank you for your presence in this worship experience. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you, O oh God, how you've touched minds and hearts, O oh God, and tilted the soil, O oh God, that we might receive your word this morning. Now, Holy Spirit of God, I ask once again that you find pleasure in using this vessel of clay. Yeah. God, think through my mind and speak through my lips, O oh God, and let your perfect will be done this day. Send an anointing, O oh God, that as your word go forth, it will find a resting place in the hearts and minds of the people, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that by your might and by your power, O oh God, you might speak to these people and encourage them to run on and see what the end's gonna be. We ask these things and count it as done by faith in the precious and the marvelous and the miraculous name of your son Jesus. We do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 And Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I come this morning as commissioned by God with a word. Amen. That we might find rest in Him. For there is rest for the weary soul on this morning. This scripture speaks of a time and a season where Jesus was dealing with his disciples, but he was also dealing with the Pharisees, those that was the keepers of the law, the religious wow. order in his day. The Pharisees were serious and strict about keeping the law, but they had no compassion on people. Wow. They were concerned more about the rituals of their religion and their order rather than people themselves. These Pharisees, this religious order in Jesus' day, had made it so hard for people to live a righteous life. But God is not concerned about tradition. He's concerned about his people. Some of us make it so hard because our religion, our faith is built up in a bunch of do's and don'ts in God's house. But the only thing that God requires is that we receive his son, love him, and walk in obedience to his word. But there are those that will burden you down that you got to do it a certain way, that you got to talk a certain way, you got to live a certain way, you got to dress a certain way in order to be a Christian. But God said, if you have love in your heart, if you love me and love your brothers and sisters in Christ, then everything would be all right. Here Jesus is speaking to those who had been laboring under the heavy yoke of the law. He's speaking to those who were trying to live for Christ, but facing difficulties on every hand. Here we see Jesus trying to tell the people that are trying to live up to a standard that everything's going to be all right. Jesus says unto them, those of us that have been working in the kingdom, Jesus is saying to us on this morning, those that lead up ministry, those that have shown themselves faithful in the midst of the storm. He says, come unto me. He beckons us. He summons us. He intrigues us. He invites us. Those of us that are weary in our spirits, he says, come unto me. Come unto me. He said, come. Come means to approach. Come means to reach and to move forward. Come means to position yourself with me. Come means to enter into a state or condition. And here we see the Son of God. We see Jesus himself saying, come unto me. He bids us to come. He gives us an open invitation to come. And it blows my mind that Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy One, will want to have a relationship, will want to be in our presence and desire that we be in this. It blows my mind that a loving God or a holy God, a, God, a righteous God, will want me to come and to fellowship with him. I don't know about you, but that does something to me because I know that I'm not perfect. I know I got a lot of stuff going on in my inner man. I know I'm carrying some things in my heart that I need to let go. But regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of my condition, I hear Jesus say, come on. I know you're weary. I know you're tired. I know you're heavy laden. I know you're burdened down. I know you're overload. I know you're weighing down. Come unto me. We come a difficult year. We've come through a year that has made us weary. We're facing things and being challenged physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. And some of us, let's be honest and realist, we are tired. 
a government that has no respect yeah. for its people. Yeah. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired of trying to hold on to our faith. Yeah. We're tired of trying to put up a good front. And I know you're fronting. Yeah. I know you're fronting, and I'm glad yeah. you're here, and I'm glad you're staying strong. But let the truth be told, I can go pew by pew, and everyone is going through something. Yeah. Everyone is carrying something. If it's not you, it's the spouse. If it's not you, it's the children. It's the grandchildren. It's the economy. It's the job, it's my finance, it's my health. But let the truth be told, all of us have been pressing and trying to believe we're going through something and we are tired. But in the midst of our weariness, in the midst of us being tired and worn, I hear Jesus saying, come unto me and I will give you rest. No matter how strong or devoted we are. There's times and seasons that we become weary. And yet saints do get weary. Uh -huh. Sometimes we become weary even in the work of the Lord. Sometimes we get tired of living for God, giving God our best, uh -huh. and seeing no changes in our life. Uh -huh. Sometimes we work in ministry, we pour out our spirit, but see no results. Sometimes we get weary because we declare that we are prayer warriors. We declare that prayer changes things. But yet I've been praying month after month, year after year, and I see no changes. And let the truth be told, I'm, I'm getting a little weary. Huh? I'm not losing my faith, huh? but I'm tired of pouring out. Huh? I'm tired of giving and not receiving. I'll be honest this morning, I get discouraged. Huh? We get weary, worn, uh -huh, huh? and we get tired. Huh? Sometimes we feel like fading. Sometimes we feel like giving up. Huh? But be not weary huh? in well-doing. Huh? For in due season, huh? you will reap if you fade.
for a night. I, but joy, I said joy is coming in the morning. The rest that Jesus gives us is an empowering rest that makes us more productive. But we must learn how to rest in his word. We need to rest in the word. Rest in every promise that Jesus has made. Rest in his presence. Yeah. <laughs> 